Hat Ramsam Vam Gabab Hasz Sav Lahag Ziz Yazam Taz Marks Hat Ramsam Vam Gabab Hasz Zav Lahag Ziz Yazam Taz Marks Hat Ramsam Vam Gabab Hasz zv lahag ziz yizm tizmerks. So I'm here again with uh, channel dark blue and um, so what's your thoughts about uh, the upcoming equinox and the uh, chant there? The sound went out there, so I could not hear, but you said something about the, the equinox. Yeah, that's 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 the subject today. Um. Yeah. Um, I had to check out the definition. My, my English vocabulary is not the best one. Uh, the time or date at which the sun crosses the celestial equator when day and night are of approximately equal length. Yeah, okay, so this is a, a, a time of transitioning. And one of the words, one of the words, uh, tra <coughs> I didn't drink too much this morning, so. Um, the Tavzimas, means unveiling or occultation. And there's the opposite word on the other side. Um, well, well, actually, no, that's that's this, you know. Hmm. Um, well, I, 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 I guess I'll say them when I, thought, when I find them, but some of these I have meaning for. Um, for the Celts, it was called Astara. So if you see the if you see the graphic, it kind of cuts off the edges. But um, Friday night mm. is is the night because I celebrate the because uh, if when I do observe these things, it's uh, the nearest night to the cross quarter uh, to, to the cross quarter of the equinox. <clears throat> Hold on, a second. no problem. Um, the sound is sometimes uh, uh, distorting, so I may not hear um, uh, as fast as I would wish to. Uh, if you wonder if I get silent, it is I am trying to uh, put the sound together in my mind here. Okay, it, it did. It did flash that thing. So um, I've I've set apart um, different uh, different things for each each season basically. So for the warming quarter of the year, a couple rings, uh, you know, these I found and this one I've bought and put on a different chain. Um, and I think it relates to the whole air thing. So hmm. I get, I found this yellow thing to put it in. Um, yeah. Cause th this is a talisman that has to do with thought. Now, a lot of, a lot of the talismans have, uh, the language isn't exactly correct, right? Because um, they, uh, they they kind of garbled traditions and put them into things. But um, this one regards thought. That's interesting. I, I have recently come into thought uh, in my own journey here. So it's a, an interesting coincidence that this is brought up now. Oh, did I say thought? Well, thought. Well, thought kind of relates to that. Um, because you know it is it, it, it is thought of in organizing terms. Hmm. I'm not having. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if the graphics here because it's been a while since I did the. Uh, no, I, I don't. I don't think my. I don't think my thought graphic is is on here. It's been enough time, but I. Hmm. 
So whatever this is, it's a clear one because I've, I've, I've found both of these things and I, I had them tested to see if they were more than costume jewelry, but they're not more than costume mm. jewelry, but I kind of like it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, it's very reflective. It may not be, a, it may not be a diamond, but it basically works the same for me. Um, but, oh, oh, and my, my stone. Stone of con the greenish, uh, the epidot. There is the uh, stone of compromise. Yeah. So I have I have a little stone pendant thing for each of these things. Um, but the uh, the overall theme that I have selected here, and maybe I should back away from the screen so it keeps the thing on the app. Um. The, uh, the overarching thing that I've selected is um, marriage and initiation. I mean, so marriage in a symbolic sense and in a, in a literal sense is the, is the theme there. So the verses that I've chosen there um, uh, relate, relate to that subject. And I've incorporated seasonal themes like, um, and questions. So the, the night question is how do you mediate truth? Hmm. Yeah. How do you mediate truth? Yeah, that's a really, uh, that's a big question. Um, I would, I, I try to land somewhere as to start my reflection here. How do you mediate truth? Well, it has to do with finding yourself first, I think. Um, if, if we cling to, uh, yeah, if, if we cling to the wrong, the wrong self, of course, then even if we try to mediate truth, it will not be the truth. And we, we ourselves will betray what we think is the truth later on because it was not the truth and we cannot live it really. So not only is it false to others, but it's false to us ourselves also in the long run. Like, I'm sure you've heard of the, now, uh, uh, I mean, this is not among the selected things, but I'm sure you've heard of the bit from the Bible that, uh, you know, something about truth and what is truth and um, people turn it to some big old uh, rambling uh, philosophical uh, thingamajig, but basic, basically it was, you know, um, you know, and, and any any tr any truth basically, I guess, was I think the, th the thing going on. Um, hmm. But you know, we're we're all supposed to we're supposed to you know manifest these things in our life. I think one of the things that got lost in Christianity in general was that uh, you know the you know it was it's we're supposed to uh, people were supposed to evoke themselves by their own spiritual path that they were supposed to. Yes. manifest these principles themselves and it got to be all like just oh well it's been done before so we don't have to yes exactly that they are meant to walk the path uh, that it has not already been walked for them but that's the assumption perhaps a lot of christians have that christ walked the path for them and you know it's being reflected in uh, the repetition of that Jesus saved us for our sins and all of that then of course they walk their path in different ways but I mean they think that they walk their path they say that they do but there is a distinction between relying on on a, an outside savior and to really walk yourself and here is I guess the distinction between different forms of spirituality that one centers around pleasing a savior and the other one is becoming one's own savior one of the well i, I don't know if you've seen my, saw my comment on the on the one guy's video but uh, basically uh, the second commandment is is thou shalt be thy, thy own lord and savior or however i decided to put it um
Uh, and the solar the solar question: What is your what is your criticism undermine? Hmm. What was the question in relation to? Was it criticism of uh, Christianity or? Uh, uh, well, uh, no. I mean, I mean, it's it's just it's just a general question out there because I've I tr I try to get, I say, okay, what which day is it? Which season is it? And the lunar and the solar day, like for example, the twenty uh, the twenty first of of whatever month isn't always going to be that lunar day, you know, because there's twenty nine or thirty uh, thirty lunar days. So yeah. That's one of the things that I, I, I connect to these is just like uh, I, I don't think I've I don't think I've put any of my collages for the seasons up on the channel. Um, back when my name was on YouTube, uh, was on Facebook, I I had uh, you know a whole uh, you know the year divided into eight points. But one of the things I did when I made the collages, I would look at the I would look at where the sun, the moon, and Venus and Jupiter and all that were, and I'd somehow represent it on the chart. So I'd mm. oh, I'd I'd arrange it like, yeah, in comparison, uh, uh, you know, so you could see the uh, what the what the uh, astronomy was that day. But of course, it was ast astrological. I'd have like metals and why well, I'd have pictures of metal or pictures of stones and that sort of thing. Um. Mm. um and one of the things we have here at the uh, here at the bottom, uh, right to left is the order to read it, but it's sort of combining the whole. Uh, uh, I, I've looked into uh, to the Church of Hermetic Sciences a lot, and they sort of combine Eastern and Western mysticism, and so they call it uh, Western yoga or, or something like that, and. Um, this in a different set of characters, and I guess I've I've omitted, you know, the Greek character or something. But following that sort of system, I have, well, not following that system because I've I've interpreted and turned into poems and stuff here. But you have the letters, you know, crown, then three letters, then then uh, one letter, then you know, then each level level going down, ga. Um, shut. Cup. Rud. Bug. So, you know your uh, head. Right shoulder, left shoulder is the T, so the Saturnal, um, and then you follow the usual sequence: K, P, R, D, B, G. And most ancient languages, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that most ancient languages tried to represent the universe or something like that in terms of their of of their letters and stuff. Yes. And nowadays, if we don't even know what our names mean, like, no, exactly. I know, I know my, I know one of my relatives, for example, which, um, I mean, I won't, I, I'm, I'm not saying it here, but. Uh, but I, I don't know, like, like 80 years ago or something died. And um, I probably will, will go out to that graveyard and film that whole graveyard and that, you know, his grave will be in it. But his name means, uh, you know, fame bright or something like that. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a Norse name. And I don't think anybody in the family in, until me even knew, knew what his name meant. There's no indication um, that I kind of point that things out. Just like my, like my other, uh, my my name, for example, is a variation. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not going to make it too specific here, but uh, is is a variation of a biblical name. That's a biblical variation of another name, and you'd never guess it if you don't read if you don't read some of these texts. Um, and well. What what do you th what do you think of the uh, what is your understanding of the diagram that I have this in the middle of? Um, mm, 
yeah the first thing i come to think of is one of the platonic bodies you know uh, these uh, fundamental um, 3d shapes of the universe you have it to uh, to my view here represented the one drawn with black lines there and that is i don't recall what it was called i can look it up here um Uh, the five platonic solids and the one I I see there is dodecahedron no icosahedron that it reminds me of that and that encapsulates uh, basically all of the other forms so that's the the one with yeah that's uh, the fifth one basically that, that's that's like 20 sides right yes yeah uh, um I... but i guess you i guess you could say that i kind of that, that's in a way you know you got the you got the double circle which is kind of the lunar element um and but you have that overlapping a a, a square which is which is one of the salt is which is one of the solids the cube there um I'm, I'm going to do this in chalk, so I'm, I'm not I'm not building an altar out in the. I mean, I may do something like that at, at some at some point with some of this stuff, but uh, mm. usually I just you know uh, I'm doing a. I'm doing something and moving on, because um, there there is a, there is a there is a room that the condition of the room isn't too well, but it, it's it, it definitely could work for some of my seasonal rites. Um, yeah you have a circle in the middle there also does that um, occur there for some particular reason um as i said oh, i've 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 mixed uh, i've mixed a, i've mixed a series of books and my own experience and study and stuff into into all this but the uh uh a double circle is just a very common element in in seals uh did what I did what I show you have a double circle with it? Um, yeah, this one has a, this one has a double circle in it. Um, so that's you know that's that's a very common uh, you know the, the negative, the reflective, the feminine, however you want to phrase it. Um, yeah, if you consider a ring, it is like. It is having two circles because there is like a, a circle at the top and a circle at the bottom. So in that way, it can be viewed as a double circle. I never thought of that, but a ring is not like, just one circle. Like I like uh, uh, the, the Tritica, the thing that, that I like you can do with this thing. Um, I'm not sure if it's showing at the right angle, but you know, the three circles connecting right there in the middle. Yeah. So it can be thought of in the same way. Um, and does, does the different rings there represent something different? Um, or, well, that, or... that's that's one of the things I, I'm thinking. Like, because you're you're ones uniting things. So the basic uh, mind, body, spirit. Yeah. Sort of. Um, sort of bit. Um, I'm jumbling my words a little bit today i think um and yeah but uh, with without uh, uh, you know the 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 shape uh, the the shape involved without it being the uh you know without without it actually being a 12 sided like gem sort of thing that you're supposed to think of or or something like that it kind of does kind of make you think of oh maybe the seven is combining into a different you know, into a broader into a broader scheme or manifesting a more specific set of divisions or something like that. So, mm. um, and you see the the Baz and the Yekian. So the the two pillar, the, the light and the dark pillar. The uh, oh, I don't. What does Baz and Yekian mean? Um, so I'm probably going to use I. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do something different on that uh, on one side versus the other there, but um, 
green is my color. Green, uh, I arranged the year in terms of color. So mm. now is purple, next is gonna be green. And after that's yellow and then white and then red, blue, orange, black. Um, and I mean, so, some of it you can understand like the coldest time of year is purple. Mm. And the hottest time of year is red. Brightest is white, darkest is black. And, um, so let's see. Without me telling you, I, I, I mean, I've got, I've mentioned the theme. Without me telling you, what what entity, what entities do you think would be referenced in the following? and then Hmm. I have no idea actually, but I, I spontaneously came to think of extraterrestrials, but uh, I, am, I'm, I don't think that that is what you were thinking of yourself. Well, in a way, because they live in a different realm, but so, so the, the marriage theme, um, I, I picked a couple chants I got for a couple uh, goetic entities and so you have Astarte and Baal. And the Church of Hermetic Sciences is, is very into the whole. They're, they're an attempted resurrection of the Baal and Astarte cult for the modern times with regard of Eastern tradition of Tibet and India and stuff too. So, I mean, that sounds about as complex as trying to figure out what the variety on my channel is going to be if you don't know my schedule <laughs> but um hmm. some people speculate the tibetans are having uh, something to do with the, the extraterrestrials or yeah extraterrestrials in general because oftentimes spiritual people are at the side of uh, occultism and the guishi and so on and then we have another group of spiritual people um, talking more about extraterrestrials but anyway, some people, they want to view the Tibetans as having deep connections with extraterrestrials. But I don't know if that's just a new age belief, but I, I, I just, just came to recall it when you mentioned the Tibetans right now. Well, I, I'm, I'm not good at pointing it out, but over there in that corner is the one, and then over there is... And then over towards 29 here, you have that star, so. Okay, let me, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not, okay. Yeah, no, I, I can't point, but right under the O and the H, you have the star. So there, there's, there's sigils there. Um, I don't think I'm gonna use the sigils, but. Hmm. So I guess the I guess the next part to to address here is what well, you notice in the blue in the blue I have the basically the season as different alchemical points. So you have conjunction for spring, and you have calcination and solution and um so the east so the so the uh fall is solution and calcination is is the summer and winter is separation and so i thought i'd sh i thought i'd share now um The uh, you know this this the series that that a person regards going through. Okay, um, okay. So, for the sake of mine own head, I expose myself through the questioning, and was entrusted 
with secrecy. Upon the door of my desiring, a proven self-control has led to the endowment of stability in duality. I have taken the mark of giving up my life in life upon the cause of the afterlife and earned the authority to perform the rites regarding death. I set my foot into the unknown, lacking in sight, but felt my way towards the defeat of illusion and delusion to gain insight and ability to express and practice the way of the law. My mouth was not moved by fear and pain as I destroyed the false ego and acquired chemistry claws. My palms were put together Are I raised my fist, not knowing what to do, as I, as a high priest, with worry and thanks, then I was given instruction beyond mere tradition for all sorts of symbology. My house is built, I am approved carry on the word and pass every test as a living word for the people and all divinity. So that's the, oh, the word in stone. My, my picture wasn't as clear in part, so I had trouble reading it, but basically that's the seven initiations represented by the letters because you see the letters being talked about in that series. Hmm. Yeah, it sounded like an initiation. I have not heard it before, so I had no idea, but it sounds like when you come to the next step and you are meant to walk more independently, that you no longer rely on the teachers you had before, before you came to this stage. And now, having come to this stage, you are meant to finally take the step into the unknown and walk yourself and thereby acquire wisdom and, yeah, come back later on as someone who has accomplished um, yeah what had to be accomplished basically which most likely is bound to one's own uh, timeline and higher purpose and and so on but i came to think of you know we we spoke earlier about uh, truth how to uh, radiate truth or live truth and uh, i came to think of that you know what you read here may be related to that to be able to come to one's own truth and and that's not a matter of finding it an interesting idea to live in truth but you know it requires a lot of exploration and courage so that that I was I was connecting the sort of thing in Kratarapoa uh, to the uh, to the uh, hermetic sequence and seasonal ceremonies and stuff like that. But um, uh, Kratarapoa is a book from like the 1700s. I don't know if I don't know if it's earlier or something, but it kind of represents the Egyptian. Uh, it's what people said the Egyptian system of initiation was, and. Um, you know, I'm leaving out, you know, okay, you got to get approval of the king. And um, if you've heard of the skull and bones. No, I have not heard. Well, uh, it, was it Yale or something? We had, in my, in my country, we had a couple people run for president at the same time. And they basically were skull and bones members of the same university at the same time. Um, well, I mean, you're a member forever, but you know what I mean? They went to school at the same time. So I guess they, they, they met long before they ran for president. Um, and one of the things that this group has you do is you sit in a coffin, something you can admit all sorts of embarrassing secrets and stuff like this. Um, so starting at the solar thing, um, 
because if if you if you're familiar with the six with the seven breakdown with the sun in the middle or or going up the tree of life it's it's at the pelvis i guess that's your that's the point where either you're married or you have a make a pilgrimage or your reputation is secure or whatever the theme is regarding there so your reputation isn't quite secure because you're you're admitting all your embarrassing faults you're taking you're taking account and you're trying to you know let your deep dark secrets flow and basically it's so no one's betraying nobody because everybody knows stuff that they, they, that the other doesn't want getting out mm. um and Scientology, I guess, does the same thing. Is that is they keep records, they keep records of all your confessions, and unlike the Catholic Church, which keeps them secret for like like two hundred years or something like this, uh, whatever survives after two hundred years, then you can read about it. Um, I, I don't remember the exact thing, but that's like the Catholic rule basically. But um, Scientologists, they don't want you to ever, once you join, they never want you to leave. So anything that comes up in their in their e meter counseling things like, you, you know what they do in Scientology? They got these magic love tester things that you hold that kind of measure the warmth in your hands, and you have a reaction and and it's yes. sort of counseling with a carnival trick. <laughs> um, and you know get it, and and then the second it, you know. In the Venus part, you get tested, and you get to, well. You get you keep getting tested. Basically, is is the point. But you get tested in different ways, and you acquire the. Uh, I I had this thing. You know, you got fear and hope and life and death, and so you gain the powers. Not necessarily that you can literally move mountains or something, but you're you remain equiposed regardless of these uh, things going on here. Yeah. Con confession is, uh, you know, when they confess, I can only see a, a game of power that some people want others to confess in order to gain power over them. And, you know, if they are recording it, it becomes like they bind people to something. And, and you know, having recorded it, as you say, they, they keep the records and of course, it can be used against you, but they don't even have to because you know that what you have said is being stored. So you, you, just by knowing it, you are within a certain limiting frame that, that you have entered. So that's also how I view psychology to some degree. No, we should not be having conspiracy theories when it comes to psychology because it helps people and people need such help. But as I see it sometimes is that there is nothing wrong with people, only that they have a bad narrative of their own lives so they cannot put it together and sense that it is meaningful. And then they come to some psychologist and they, it becomes like a confession like saying that, yeah, I am bad and uh, I think in this way and therefore I am bad. And, and then when that confession has been made, one has been placed uh, under the authority, which is then meant to offer you the solution. And of course, it can become like a power dynamics there, which is not healthy. But again, I don't want to discredit psychology and psychotherapy and so on, because it helps when it is working in the right way. Well, it's, but, it's basically it's it's ba a, a lot of these uh, secular things are basically just uh, removing some of the context that would have been there with the other stuff, you know. Um, yes. I mean, they call it a witch doctor, but yeah, when you when you went to get your medicine, they'd perform some sort of spell or something, and um, it is a social um, a social um, interplay that within the religious and spiritual context of previous times is uh, very much like the interplay happening in the setting of psychology and psychotherapy and so on. It's like I've, I've taken, I've taken confession and I've, I've, I've done exorcisms for, for others and stuff like this. And it's like, well, I've never, I've never made it about like 
my power over the person. Maybe I know more uh, in the situation, or maybe I'm looking at it as somebody different and helping along, but it was never about, you know, like, you know, I have the power over the person or something. And, and uh, I mean, there's, there's stuff you don't want to hear, you know, and you can't unhear. When it works, then the one who is having the solution is also having power, but that one is wise enough to use it to help the other person. And then that's the right way. But of course, it can go in a direction where the one having the power is, is uh, yeah, basically power hungry and really doesn't have the interest in helping others. So that's like somebody that I've talked, uh, so, uh, you know, one one group that I've uh, that I've talked about, and I'll I'll put the thing on this uh, on the screen. Um, this the guy. Ha- the, the guy that leads this group now, he uh, has, uh, you know, they, they la- the, ba- basically, it doesn't, not only does it, what he, uh, you know, for some reason they uh, like, they put forward like his stories are funny, even though they're the most like not things li- ever. And it's just like, you'd never laugh at that thing if it wasn't this, the spiritual leader saying that. But he, he basically has people he gets up on a stage and he has people uh basically people worship him and he shows up and it's like mm, yeah he uh, like people are saying uh, people are chanting and he's like yeah they're doing this to worship me but uh, i mean he's not saying those words but he's like mm, yeah he's like basking in the whole thing um but which is probably why he stopped do- uh, he used to tell uh, to provide a bunch of spiritual exercises and stuff like that. And he used to be active in, you know, initiations and stuff like this. Now it's just, they print his name on a, on an initiation form and someone else does the initiation and uh, their initiations work much better when your eyes are shut, by the way, because almost always you're going to, uh, I, I guess somewhere somebody can do it without holding the book, but some guy holding a book and, and, randomly choosing a word from the list as your secret word and all that stuff it doesn't um you know it doesn't have the effect if you if you open your eyes at the wrong time um now i i kept my i kept my eyes shut but the but yeah but the guy didn't put his book away quick enough um and the book the book was he for he didn't you know he he forgot to put the book away before i was done uh, before we were done um so um But yeah, uh, well, some of the tri- some of the trials, like that, you'd be put through with some of this stuff. Like, if you've heard of the Freemasons, one of the things they're supposed to do is they, um, at some point, uh, well, a typical thing is is uh, that that a lot of groups would do is they they think they it's like you're gonna fall, and no, they catch you. And it's like they're going to poke you with, uh, uh, cut you with swords and all this, uh, all this stuff if you mess up slightly. And you're like, and they're not going to, um, like now nowadays, particularly because like somebody could go back later and like uh, like sue them if you accidentally get cut or something. It's like, um, so uh, you know they, they they got rubber tips on swords and stuff like this. And I've been to OTO lodges and it's like we don't, uh, you know. We're not even using fake bullets anymore. Uh, uh, you know the the wax, putting wax in instead of the thing. And um, is isn't that isn't that what you do for uh, blanks? Blanks is the wax breaks up instead of. Mm, what was it? The question to me. Um, bl- shooting blanks. Don't they uh, don't don't they have like wax or something like like like. You hear this. You hear the sound, but but it breaks up like that. I am not sure, actually. I have no no great insight into their stuff at all, actually. Uh, only that I have heard that they have so they have some initiations, which can be questionable. But yeah, uh, but basic basically, there's a lot of different thought experiments that you that you that a person goes through, and a lot of different emotions they're trying to stir you uh, stir up in you in this at the same time. And um, 
but most of the ones nowadays it's it's like if you don't have it if you don't have your bit memorized you'll probably be helped along with it it's not you can't memorize a big old speech and you can't move you can't move on you know mm. um and in that spirit i've you know, I'm, I'm not a Freemason, so I don't, I don't know, but I've heard that some of the, that when you go through the chairs, you know, you get your first three initial degrees, and then there's like the 33 degrees of Scottish Masonry, so you got more to go, and the, they used to give a lecture for each one, and now they're, now I hear they're, they're figuring that people can't, people can't learn the lectures, so instead of spend, uh, spending decades probably moving your way through the chairs like most people would or doing it when you're when you're young and can learn all this stuff um it's amazing what people could do before tv right yeah i i was you mentioned in what you read earlier there about uh, dissolving the false ego that was part of the initiation that the text reflected that you read earlier but you know if you are seventh degree or 15th degree or whatever my question always is you know what happens when someone with whatever degree steps out of that context and you know has to live an ordinary life where no one is confirming that they have the 17th degree or whatever for you know, if if their spiritual path actually was about strengthening the false ego, then they will suffer greatly when the framework in which the false ego lived and was developed, when that framework dissolves, they are left with nothing. And that creates a great suffering. But the question is then, if they are the 31th degree, what will happen if they somehow exit that frame of social interaction which defines those degrees are they really having some skill or or is it just within the social context which may, must not be necessarily bad because people can find magical meaning within social uh, societies also but the question is what is the nature of their knowledge is it bound to their collective or is it independent of it Oh, I may also. Particularly in my country, which has um, now the the numbers of Freemasons has gone way, way down. It used it used to be any every other respectful businessman, or even more than that, was a Freemason, um, and so therefore, you know, because of the networking and all that stuff. Um, but even nowadays, where there's all the conspiracy theories and stuff floating about, there's there's respect for somebody who's gone through more than a couple, of, more than the first few degrees or something. If you hear, uh, you can't verify it if you're not if you're not one of them or anything. But uh, there there's respect for a master uh, for for a uh, well master masons like the third or something. I, I don't remember the names of uh, of all this stuff, but um, there's there's respect for people like Albert Pike. Albert Pike had different honors. Now, one of the uh, uh, he he had honors as a Christian. He had honors as a Freemason. He re, uh, he was like the figure of Freemasonry of the of the time, sort of, because he rewrote the rituals and to be more meaning more meaningful or something like that. I don't. Um, and he was he was he uh, you know he's a general. His statue is in Washington D.C. or something like that, and the only Confederate general who ever was that and. Um, you know, they overlooked that. You know, it was the Confederacy was no more. They over people overlook that um, in general. Um, one of the sets of honors um, is problematic because if you look at it out of context, definitely um, he was honored as a as a Ku Klux Klansman, and but he was a Ku Klux Klansman who who actually call for black rights to a degree, uh, to a degree. He, you know, he had the power to shut down the black lodges of, of Freemasonry because it was hard at that time, obviously, until, until like 50 years ago in my country, it was hard for a person that had any, that showed any Negro features to get accepted into a lodge because somebody would reject them on that, on 
what they look like alone. Because, you know, when you, some of these law, uh, uh, Freemasons aren't the only one where everybody has to approve of you being a member. And if they don't, you're not, you don't make it. Um, and that, that even include in Freemasonry, that even includes if you are a Freemason and you move, you may not be allowed at the, uh, at the next launch. They may vote you, they may vote and say, hey, you know, you're not going to be, uh, you don't get your blue launch, you know. I think that's what they what they call it. Um, but yeah, I'm not. You know, uh, now I can't say I can't say what he uh, what 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 as a Klansman uh, Albert Pike did, but he definitely renounced before he died. He definitely renounced the racism. So um, it's basically a police. Uh, uh, the and the main reason for that group appearing wasn't ra racism as much as it was. Um, after the war, they said anybody who was of any significant rank in the Confederacy couldn't hold office in politics and all sorts of stuff. And basic, uh, you know, the, the, the police force and stuff like this took, took quite a while to, that there were more blacks killed in the North after the war, but there was most of the bad history of the Ku Klux Klan was before 1882. They killed more people before that point than after. Um, and so there was there was there was a bunch of killing from them. There was killing from other people, and um, there was there was a degree of lawlessness, and that was what that was about. I'm I'm not justifying the organization. I think that there was there was problems to begin with. Like, um, I, I I definitely disagree with at least two of their main three points that for the white race and for the Christians only that sort of thing, basically. Um, so yeah. Um, so mo moving on, I guess, uh, unless you have any 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 thought, because I'm I'm getting in a tangent that's that's going to be misunderstood. <laughs> yes, it's always um, it's always uh, a lot of things that uh, has to be studied in order to come to good uh, analysis of different situations and even more contemporary situation. We have political situations and so forth and. It's easy to jump to conclusions, but first of all, what does it matter? I mean, if I have a certain opinion, I spend my time on that and I spend time finding information to confirm the op opinion I have or, or that opposed opinion I have, but you know, it doesn't provide me with anything in the end. And my voice is not relevant at all in, in society when it comes to those things. So what I have found is that Instead, one uh, turns the attention to what can I do in my own life to to live a fulfilling and happy life, and that that's enough. You, you know, there is so much evil in the world, and you know we know it, but people they 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 can still not do anything about it. So that's like a trag tragedy of existing. It is tragical that we exist and know that there is evil, but we cannot do anything against it really as individuals and uh, how to live with that you know <laughs> it's difficult but at some point one has to turn attention to oneself and just do the best with within the sphere of influence that one has well i i think that's one of the things is that rather than this people just get absorbed in the in the herd whatever it like Literally, like in my country, people will literally, uh, mo most people are, are part of two political parties and they will automatically vote, not based on any principles or anything else, just, just what their political party tells them to do. And um, rather than individually responding, now I, 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 I vote, but um, I, I consider, you know, the, the, the lesser of, uh, you know, two evils or, or whatever. And, um, and even if I vote for somebody, I can say, no, no, I don't agree with what he's saying he believes or what he's doing there. I can, I, you know, I, I can say that. I don't have to approve or disapprove everything forever. Like some people, it's like, no, no, you voted for the guy. You have to, it's like, you know. Hmm. But if, if people just, yeah, people do need to focus on their own individual response and realize that their influence is only so far. But if they do that right, 
society can overturn and we're not, you know, we're not generally oppressed by 10 families or, or and some other individuals that are almost as powerful as, as, as Jeff Bezos is actually, uh, or, or Bill Gates or something, their families are not part of the big 10, but look at how rich these people are. Um, cause they're, they're right on, they're, 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 I mean, they're, they're more powerful than they are rich, but, um, they, uh, but yeah, you know, we have examples like that going on. Um, but these people rule because people don't, they're not trying to do the best for themselves, what they can, what they can do. I'm not, I'm not, don't mean that necessarily in a selfish, you know, just lift the finger to everybody else way, but, um, I mm. guess um, so. The final, the final poem part. We're not, we're not going to obviously have time for for all the verses or something. But um, the emergence of the hibernating and the return of the migrating has provoked the other animals playing of rainbows and hope. We are singing. Open our bodies minds and souls to the questioning union and the young have brought blessing we bring the cradle of sacrificing the prince and princess of brightening purifying glorifying hastening warming presenting speeding I can't read that. Um, and giving has become us in our knowing and enacting the day of awakening. So any thoughts there? Because like this is... Um, was, was this related to the equinox? Yeah, th this this is more understandably related to the uh, the equinox. I try to think of animals and and that sort of thing that relates, and so it's 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 sort of the the sunrise of the year. You can think of the year as the equinoxes or the sunrise and the sunset. Mm. The uh, the solstices are midday, midnight, and the others are you know dawn, mid morning, mid afternoon dusk you know so Samhain a Samhain would be dusk And just like winter, you uh, you have something to do with elders. Um, spring would be youths that they have a calling, but they haven't realized their calling yet. Exactly. I, I have reflected recently. This was actually what someone else mentioned. I came across it on the internet somewhere that in early life, we are one person connected with family but you know when one becomes like 30 years of age one is another person that there is a transitioning and you no longer live um, yes basically you have trans transitioned and now uh, at the age of 30 you start to live your purpose what you actually came here for whatever was before was to be integrated in the human social context of family and society but at the age of 30 that person has given place for another person who is gonna live your life's real purpose which is something entirely different so yeah spring youth not knowing one's purpose it totally resonates with me in that way because I myself reflect on how how little connection I experience with the things I I were I had connections with before under the age of 30 when I was in the springtime of my life 
So, yeah. So just like, um, you know, just, just, like, uh, just like marriage is not something necessarily that people go out and find themselves, but they can find it themselves. Um, that, you know, that, that's, that's why, okay, so if you got the, you know, the day, so you're, you know, that's, that's the time. Um, so that's, uh, I'm not articulating well today. Um, so the, so the, so the, so the verses that I, that I, that I, that I have listed there for, um, are basically verses that are either traditionally used in wedding ceremonies or verses that relate to the terms of such things. Because in most, in most religions, although it may not be uh, stated as such, I think the uh, really most of religion is, 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 is marriage and family. That's that sort of, that sort of thing. Um, people think it's all about, you know, the once a week thing you do at, uh, at church and hopefully not. Um, but so many people, that's, that's, that's what it is. It's like, um, how many times have I heard such and such is a good Christian? And it's like, literally the only sign that they're Christian is Christmas, Easter, and they've been to church, whether they go to church every week or what, uh, what whatever, uh, you'd have no clue of any spiritual identification if you saw them outside those moments, you know? I mean, even the, even the point of being very, uh, even the point of, well, I, uh, okay, well, I, I guess, I guess I don't have to explain, but yeah, you, you know what I mean? They don't, they don't, they don't follow the principles, um, their business, their, you know, you get to, some guy, some guy beats his wife and kids and everybody's all like, how good a Christian he is. And it's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. It, it's uh, this delusion of, um, it's it's this naivety that people um, cling to and think therefore they are good people because they are naive and not aware of the dark sides of uh, nature reality and themselves and therefore are surprised when when their neighbor comes forth as someone having beaten his wife and kids they cannot comprehend it and, and their spirituality has been about suppressing that side of themselves and society and uh, the, the whole the whole unikite stone here uh relating the whole compromise thing that's part of the reason why people stay so single they expect things to take uh, I, I don't know we grew up watching disney movies and and stuff like this and expect things to be so uh, it's the old fairy book and everything else and either we we uh get married out of desperation where people were like okay i guess i have to so, you know, they're, they're, you know, it may not be forced marriage, but they're forced into it a different way. Um, but they don't realize, that, you know, people are just so completely selfish and like, rather instead of uh, mix, uh, mixing together uh, strengths and weaknesses and different levels of drives and making that work, people are like, no, if it's not perfectly my way, it's not, that's, it's, you know. Hmm. Of course, of course, I've uh, the whole aspect of soulmates. Now, I understand people consider it outside of this, and um, which, uh, but I like the idea of soulmates as people who work together for a, for the same spiritual purpose. Now, I like like if you know some if someone believes in, in one of these one of these books or something, and supposedly does fully. It doesn't mean that they're going to have exactly the same interpretation everywhere and that sort of thing. But um, um, so that's uh, so people have taken it outside of that and said something else. It's like the tarot card, the lovers. Um, very often you have a couple brothers there. It's not just people getting married. It's um, it's it's other it's other covenants and stuff like that. Now, of course, we yeah. know better nowadays than to dig up the earth and crawl under it and and do a blood pack because that's you know the risk of involved in that is known now but um to that sort of extent because it's, it's like i it's like i pointed out particularly when you get in the mars sphere you're willing to uh 
whatever your body is going to go through, um, pain and everything else, you're, you know, sometimes what you're going to accomplish is more important. What you're trying to do is more important than all that. I mean, I'm not saying, I, I, de I definitely don't believe, uh, I, I've commented about this sort of stuff, but I don't believe that you have to do anything that's necessarily harmful. It's like, I fast, but I don't harm uh, fast in the detrimental way. You know, you experience the fast and then you move on. You don't, you don't fast an extra couple of days and not be able to fast again for, for months, you know? Exactly. When it, when, um, when young, a, a young spiritual seeker may be tempted to think that self-harm would be some, some kind of, yeah, that, that it works basically, but self-harm yeah let's call it self-harm we can call it you know just uh, going through some pain also that's a better way to say it that if you go through pain like uh, fasting many extra days then that may just be an excuse for lack of intelligence that you think that you can take a shortcut just by by prolonging some adversarial state instead of having an intelligent solution really dealing with the forces of uh, spirituality so yeah it's it's basically in my view that you fall into the assumption that if i if i go through this if i if i am able to remain with this then i will get some reward as as if <laughs> yeah but but you know there is no reward at all. No one is going to give you anything because you do something that is boring or painful, but you achieve things because of intelligent ways of going about things. When you learn to ride a bicycle, being able to ride the bicycle finally is not a reward for having uh, practiced. It just is the natural consequence of having applied intelligence and effort, and then it works. But, but you know, if, if you... If you try to learn riding a bicycle by <laughs> by doing it in a painful way, it doesn't guarantee that you actually learn to ride it in a, a, a good way or at all. And I view spirituality the same now. And, and we also have this male, ma uh, this male uh, macho attitude of that everything has to be difficult and hard and, and all of that. And, that therefore, because others can see that I suffer by this and that I am so strong and go through it, therefore, uh, I am supposed to get uh, some divine uh, reward here. But no, I don't think so. Like, it, like, you can, like you can see, like in some of the morning processions, like for example, uh, for example, with some of the, uh, now but most, most Shia are not like this, but, uh, but in Shiite Islam, there's definitely, a current of some of that behavior and you can see you can see videos of where this of this stuff going on um and you can find the person in the crowd am i being watched i'm not gonna hit myself as hard because i'm not being watched um exactly exactly and if you can only find maybe you can only find one but you can use uh, depending on uh, you can when you got those big crowds you can always find that or, or and, the, and then the person who's doing it so they can watch others do it <laughs> exactly <laughs> um, yeah that, that's why I like to walk my spiritual path alone, because in the loneliness and desolation, no one is going to applaud you because you do something that is crazy. Only what works, what really works is going to, uh, to, to have you progress. And you know you progress because it works. And, and when you are in a social circle, you know, if you, if you um, do something extra hard, like the example you mentioned, you do it and you know that others view it then you fool yourself and think that it is some spiritual progress you're doing but you know it isn't really and it's the trap of social uh, social spirituality but of course social spirituality also have the benefit of being able to push you in different directions you know like uh, belonging to a meditative uh, group who who are encouraging discipline and so on but as you like, mentioned, like the O2, uh, like the uh, like the Order of Nine Angles, if you know who they are. Yeah, I know uh, briefly or vaguely. I, I have an idea of of who they are, having listened to other people and read a few articles only. And so, some of the ordeals, it's like 
you got to realize that you can get into state without these without these things and these people you know cut yourself and beat yourself for 88 days and 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 switch where you're only uh, it's like if you only eat uh, consume meat and dairy your body's going to you're not going to get big and strong it's going to be quite the opposite so that's one of the things they try to get people to do is to try to you know to turn them into a predator and it's like they always end up weaker looking than they were before exactly from my own experience because you can access this uh, raw animalistic hunter instincts within yourself but it is not like people may think that you have to do something extreme no instead you just have to work with the right symbolism so for example go out in the middle of the night without anyone knowing because this is not a social thing you're not gonna post uh, uh, on, on social media you know telling people i am going to go and do this now look at me how good i am no you go alone and then you perform a simple ritual with fire and you eat some raw meat that is enough to evoke this to invoke this uh, primal force within yourself, given that you have a wider context of such a path working. So it has not to be anything extreme at all. In fact, it should not be extreme in my view, because the spiritual seeker should have a mind subtle enough to be sensitive to symbolism as to not be required to have extreme things in order to set deeper forces in motion, in order to unlock these deeper forces. So that's something that I, I have been surprised myself when I have performed such simple rituals and still have had effects, be, having been able to access these more animalistic forces relating to the spirit animals and, and so on. And one sees here the, uh, you know, the, the silver and the cup and the golden rod and all that stuff, and you produce the, the sacred elixir. And... Um, uh, aside from the uh, aside from the sexual uh, implication there, the um, one of the things that people think with this ritual drug use, and very often people's like, "I'm a shaman." It's like you're just a drug abuser that you don't really, you know, that that's that that reads his Bible or or whatever he does. Um, the, the 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 drug uh, you're just throwing a little uh, a little something in. It's it's. I mean, there there is a people authentically doing this as as part of their path, but. It seems like most of the people, it's like, you know, they just want an excuse, but um, there's a reason why they call them intoxicants. But if you spend the time and you figure, okay, my body, particularly the head and stuff has these spots and these paths, and I'm going to work for months to try to have this experience. And I've done it with, I, I don't know how many different types of highs you could say, but it can take months to get there and be able to just go back there and back there and back there. Um, but somebody takes a drug. It's like, what's, what's the, what's, what's, what's the usual bit that people talk about with a uh, heroin or some opiate It's like, well, the second or third time in, and then you're like, you get so high that you never get high. Uh, you never get that high again. Well, I mean, the people using the illegal drugs, they're like drain cleaner and paint thinner and all that stuff. And, and who knows what other adult, uh, what what adulterants are in with that stuff? So they're dealing with the sickness with that. So their first time around or two, they're like, "I know I can get really high, but I, uh, you know, they have to get to the point where they can, you know." But then they then they can't, you know. They've dam they've damaged them they've damaged themselves, and they never quite get that way again. And um, unless they overdose, and then they're like, then they could lose half their brain or die or something like that. And it's like. But then they re then they remember. Oh, I got higher than I ever got uh, got again. The the trick is not to uh, not to turn blue next time. And um, Manchak Chia, this like Taoist master or something like that. I watched his show. Uh, he's talking about this mushroom, and there's a mushroom that you can tell. Uh, I think it was him. Um, basically, they get so high, it's like they're seeing God and stuff. And but you may take it, you may go back for a couple sessions before you realize that you basically, you're, di you're gonna die. So you don't, it, it, you could literally have killed yourself with multiple sessions before you figure out the damage that you've done. And 
know, that's... So the damage the damage increases for every one one every time one takes it. Uh, did I understand it correctly? Well, I, it is... yeah, more more with some versus others, but but yeah, um, but the people who use uh, the the old, uh, I mean. I, I say, you know, I said a mushroom, so definitely people know what they're what they're doing. But like, there are groups that would use the mushroom as like it's a one-time thing. You're not doing it again. You can recover from one time, but you, but two or three times could kill you. So that's uh, that, that's that's it. Um, which is quite a thing to play with. Um, but some of these groups, like for the 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 Haoma and the Soma and stuff like this, they'd give you lower dosage. Uh, they they wouldn't give you they tend not to give you so much that the drug alone is going to make it like you're more intoxicated than all your friends combined like like the hymn goes um but most of what's going on is the ritual it's like in mithraic ceremonies when they hand out the wine you're not getting plastered drunk you're supposed to work yourself into a trance and the wine's just just a, just a, just a bit of an edge at most um yeah this is a surprising effort that I have experienced with uh, alcohol now recently because I have bought uh, craft beer, which is a new experience to me because otherwise I don't like beer. But this craft beer, uh, it, it is not like the ordinary beer, so it works in a different way for me. And I don't get this sharp alcohol effect by it, but it is more subtle. And I have noticed that I can work with this in order to get into a mind state where I, yeah, where I benefit on my spiritual journey, of course. But <laughs> the interesting thing is that when I bought the first craft beer, you can get uh, random throat cards if you reload the page. And I got the temperance card, which was an interesting, uh, interesting sign because, of course, if you are using substances, there has to be moderation and purpose and, and all of this. Well, like, uh, now, I, now I don't use such for such purpose, but if I like have to, uh, you know, if I have to get us, uh, if I, if I, if I end up getting us another surgery or something like that, or if I, uh, whether teeth pulled or something else, I'm, I'm going to use, I'm going to try to use that state. So I've, uh, I, I remember what, 15 years ago or something, I, I, I said, okay, I, I'm, so, I'm so high that I have to be helped in, inside my home. So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to try to at least write a poem before the whole thing's over. What was the last thing you said? You, you have to sit there and... Um, a after having, de ha having teeth pulled at the dentist, I was, I was still like fall uh, flopping falling uh, falling uh you know high afterwards so uh, when i got home i'm like okay i'm uh when i was helped in my door i'm like okay well i'll you know i'll get up in a couple hours it'll be over but i'm like you know get me uh, you know get me a pen and paper i'm 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 gonna try to at least write a poem or something before this whole thing's over and mm. when i was in the hospital when i was in the hospital the one time that's that's what I did too. I, I was like, um, uh, if you've had Propovil, you know they they put you, they put you out on this Propovil or, so, uh, or or something like that. It's what Michael Jackson died on, and I kind of you kind of like nod in and out of sleep like um, so many times. It's like it's just, it's like incredible how much you can like wake up, fall asleep, wake up, fall asleep. How quickly you do, um, but. You know, I, I wrote down my experience on that, and it's like, um, I like somehow remembered. Uh, speaking of the whole alien things, if I if I wasn't in the hospital, or I forgot I went to the hospital, I'd think I was abducted by aliens or something because I was like, you know, I remember being there on a table with three like colored blobs or something by me or something. So it must have been must have been the uh, the doctors or something. But uh, it was it was an interesting memory, uh, but. I'm not, you know, because I, I can, I can relieve, I, uh, you know, li like an opiate or amphetamine or something. I can, I can have that experience without, uh, without taking the stuff, but it's just got to be patient and do the things just like, um, 
in a various ways here. It's it's like um, Oaster is uh, relates to the uh, whole Easter. It's where we get our word Easter from, I guess, and you know words like that. And Astarte Aster is one of the variations of that. So, um, but you know it's one's own cross that the whole. Uh, the Bible says again and again, uh, you know, it keeps having this Jesus character say, say to take up your own cross. And it doesn't mean that everybody's going out with him to die. Uh, to die. Obviously, they're passing this on. They got it. Um, at least the people initially telling this, telling the story seem to get it without actually having to die. Um, well, some of them, I guess, died, but, um, you know, it's your own you know, it's your own cross that you set up. Now there's people that set up, that set up a cross in their yard. And, oh, I, I, I that's, that's another thing. I would definitely not recommend self-crucifixion. Um, at least, at least not the one with the nails. No. It, you get, because every, every year you have people in North America that literally have themselves crucified. Um, with yeah. the nails and all that. It goes back to, to this thing that you think that yeah yeah someone doing that things like look at how good i am uh, at uh, punishing myself now i am supposed to get a reward because i have sunk in so low that i now punish myself in this severe way and now i am supposed to get the reward and i don't know they perhaps have bad conscience and and instead of yeah yeah it, it goes that way that some people find self-punishment a solution to their bad conscience also, which may be a complicated power dynamics at an esoteric level where they have been captured within some frame of, uh, of uh, yeah, you know. Well, I don't think it's always in the sense of, of self-punishment per, uh, per se, but, uh, but people, you know, they, they repeat over and over again how much of a sinner they are, and it's like, um, the, the example I have to set, I guess I have to set this exa example, but, um, you can also understand it in terms, you know, combining the Venus and the sun thing, the sun is the cross, mm. uh, the circles, the moon and the rose in the center. That's, that's Venus. Cause you know, you know, the path that, you know, why Venus is called the path star. No, I actually don't know that. That's every eight years, that. every eight years, it's you can fall at where it is compared to the zodiac. Where, what you see, you can see it form a trace of five pointed star every eight years. Mm. And you can also see it form like these little curved little lines in the sky, like like the petals of a rose. Every forty years, it basically does the whole thing this pedal, this pedal, this pedal. And you can see that in the sky through one's life, looking, looking up and paying attention to the whole thing. Um, but, you know, the uh, Venus is the Lucifer principle. And that's, you know, I've talked about the word in stone. So one of the things that you're supposed to become is you're supposed to become the living word. People have taken that all out of context because they don't know much about uh, mystical societies or Gnosticism or, or, however a person is going to phrase all that but um all these things are things that you can be i mean you don't necessarily i mean like even even some of the stuff that people obviously can repeat um i'm not saying people shouldn't go on pilgrimages i'm saying that that if you can't you don't have to um you, if you have the concept if you consider that uh, any particular pilgrimage is a thing then okay you have like like catholic churches that have those signs you know they, they have a bigger yard so they put up signs of the stations of the cross it's like you're not in jerusalem going to the places that they claim was where this happened but you're you're walking through and you're and you can do this in meditatively in a way that you don't actually have to physically get up and move that you got this spot, this spot, this spot. Um, the, the, the Muslims, they, uh, they spend years thinking, thinking of the themes and stuff that, 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 that they go through Hajj with. Uh, they, uh, 
spend years working on those formulas. And I mean, and, and some of the experiences that people have doing that, it's obviously because they've practiced it their whole life. I mean, it's probably because they practiced their whole life. I guess somebody would show up and uh, read from the book that hasn't really been uh, thinking about it much until he could. Um, but all these things, they, you know, even when it becomes uh, obligation, as that says, um, you know, there's, there's always the symbolic. It's it, those, those extra rights of uh, understanding and experience. Um, but I guess one of the things that happens sometimes if you do meet an obligation or, or however one wants to phrase that, that it's like, oh, I can, I can take this further. Because I guess I've had that experience myself is that if you don't have, uh, sometimes you feel like you haven't, uh, you know, you don't know about all this other stuff. But once you get to the point where you can meet the basic of it, then you can do more with it than you ever thought you could do with it. Yeah, you mean, I, I don't know now if it, this relates, but I, I recently heard someone talk about the importance in martial arts uh, of um, mastering the basics. If you master the basics, you are going to be better at everything else within the martial art you are practicing. So good teachers always refer back to the basics and, and encourage you to develop and strengthen the basics. Would that relate to what you're saying? Yeah, that's that that would relate. And I've 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 definitely experienced that myself is is that I didn't even expect certain things. Like like once you get used to scrying and stuff like this, it's our, our regular ritual, then it's like it affects the rest of your life. And you didn't even realize that it, you're you're spending like five minutes a day, 20 minutes a day or something like this. And it affects your ability to pay attention and, and, and all sorts of stuff that you wouldn't quite necessarily expect. It exactly. Rest of the day. Um, and because, like, yeah, I, I have uh, contemplated recent days here. What are the basics on my own spiritual path, for example, for it seems, you know, if I can find them and, and attend to them, I don't have to bother with all the other fluffy things because they will come automatically. As a, as a function of a solid focus on the basics and development of them. And, you know, I, you know, and, and if, it, it, even if one does post stuff on social media, it's like, they don't know how, they don't know how the person feels. I mean, you can sometimes tell when people are faking it. I've I, I, I've definitely seen ritual videos where you know uh, it's like, no, dude, don't 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 fake it like that. No, um, and don't don't CGI the eyes doing something different at all. <laughs> exactly, that is a very interesting thing because even though some people fake it in dramatic ways, there is also this uh, more um, uh, subtle way of faking when you do anything. Like, for example, having spent uh, half an hour recording it, at the end, I, I just feel that, no, this is not me. Now I am trying to repeat a success formula that I think that, you know, is relevant, but this is not me. I'm just trying to, to, to get something forth here because <laughs> it worked earlier, but still, this is not who I am right now. And always when I discover this, I just throw away whatever I recorded or created and then yeah it continues by me oftentimes opening to my own, own intuition and then then i create something that i don't bother if others will appreciate it give me confirmation or whatever for when i create that from my own place we can from my own truth to relate back to what we began with here that when i express myself from the place of my own truth then it stands on its own leg it, its own legs and i don't need anyone else to confirm it because it's a pleasure in expressing it 
but always when when one gets into the state of faking something there is no pleasure in it it's painful it's you hate it you hate what you do but you do it because you want something like attention or whatever but you don't like it when you're genuine you love what you do and and you love what you do it becomes genuine well and of course that of course that's different from the than the thing where when you when you do a ritual or maybe it's not considered out uh, maybe it's not ritual but uh, but when you're when you're expressing and, and connecting and that sort of thing like it's going to have an effect it's like well it's not having the effect but you're you know going through it like it has the effect like for example i mentioned the the drug like highs and it's like no you have to follow it through like it's going to have the effect and then adds the effect maybe you don't know exactly which moment it's going to have the effect but it's going to um but if you're like it's not having the effect yet so i'm just going to drop it it's like no i'm i'm following things through and then you just you accurately try to uh express what you've experienced but it's like you know uh, ritual videos people if they're if they're not going on if they're not coming along with you that's and, and they, they may exper experience something different with it too um like i've i've done that with certain broadcasts i i mean i don't have to be a christian to be able to have an experience with the broadcast of the of the of christ mass or something like this but my my experience isn't per se siding with the christian specific myth it's having a certain aspect or something with you know is it something happening in the vatican i don't know um i mean i don't do this every year or something but i've i've, I've done that before um but it's like some stuff you can't express they they don't know what you're thinking they don't know what you're feeling and you're just you know and then you come back and try to ritualize it later but as long as you're not like uh, I'm I'm okay with there being gaps in what I in what I relate, because like so many people expect you to like, literally it's like, um, you know you're coming down with your own book, you know your own book and it's it's going to be fully detailed and all this stuff and every magician's supposed to be able to do it right, and, you know, that's not really how it works out. And some of the some of the stuff, it's like they put themselves. People put themselves forward, and it's like most of these books that people were, uh, say they've got, it's like ravings of a madman or something. That's like um, maybe that's not the way to put it, but you know what you know what I mean. You've seen some of the uh, you've seen some of these channeled books and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I have seen. But you know, uh, are are you saying that? the books they give you a formula and people try to have the same experience by applying the formula and that that is not the case it's not working in that way is that what you're saying uh well that that could be it too but i i mean i mean basically like people think uh people get this thing like you know you got to have a giant occult book like you, you got to literally have a have uh, you know if you spend all these years as, as, as a magician, you've, you, you better, you better have something as big as the Bible for yourself. And exactly. Yeah. And, and very interesting. It, it better, it better have, it better be full of, uh, it, it better be full of, of, you know, rich stories. It's like, my life's pretty short. These, this stuff's written about thousands of years and compiled from who knows how many sources by hundreds of people. And <laughs> yeah. On my own spiritual path, this is very interesting that it, this is being brought up because in the background here, you can see the black uh, thing there. That's actually a box, but it is made in the form uh, of a book. It is made to look like a book and it's a dragon on it. I have showed it on my channel before, but you know, that box is empty. So it is an empty book. And the message to me is that I do not need to have a physical, I, I mean, I'm not supposed to have a physical book because the essence I am meant to tune into is not going to be accessible by text itself in a book. So this is like a, a um, yeah, they, they, they tell me, you basically want to walk this path. Well, here you get the book and the book is empty. Now, what, you, what, what do you do? Well, in my case, I have to develop my psychic abilities of being able to tune into the actual essence I am meant to work with 
the essence that I belong to and so forth. And if I am not able to do that, then uh, this path is not for me. Basically, it's about being able to tune into the current, if we are to use that word here, um, because that word captures it, what, I, what I'm talking about, I think, that you have to be able to tune into your spiritual path without relying on books, because the essence of any book is always beyond the book itself and, and what is written in it. Like, I mean, so I'm, that, I'm, I'm always right. At, well, not always. It's, it's like this is the, my Grimorian Verum like thing. So I'm, I'm writing different rituals as I go, as I go along. And I don't know what, what they're per se are going to be, but sometimes, sometimes what person, a person could have is say per se, their personal book isn't anything, you know, uh, anything like that. Um, and okay. Yeah, it, it could be just uh, just 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 some general concepts that uh, that one's living out. Or I find it interesting to observe this uh, uh, books of shadow or book of shadow that these videos on YouTube and oftentimes uh, women are doing this very elaborated uh, scrapbooking uh, book of shadows where they collect their witchcraft the formulas and all of that. Nothing wrong with that. That's their part. Um, <laughs> now I forgot what I was meant to say, but but yeah, yeah. In my case, I don't have such a book, but my channel becomes my book of shadows. So, if I am meant to write down something, how am I supposed to know what is relevant to write down? And and uh, it is that I can cover something from so many different angles that. I, I would have to write forever. So I have decided instead to use uh, video technology and just film what I do. And then I don't have to say what I do because uh, the video material is there and it can be interpreted in different ways depending on who is watching and depending on, yeah, you know, in 10 years, I will look back and see something else in it. So that's the easiest way I, I have been able to come up with to actually create a book this book we are talking about that a magician is supposed to have a book with 5000 pages but in my case i'm not going to write it i just post videos online of what i am doing yeah effect and use comes before that that sort of things so like what uh, sorry i did not hear yeah effect, effect and use certainly certainly should take priority over you know just yeah. um, one's got a but it, it's like that's one of the things that i've found in recent times it's like i i wrote i wrote a book uh what 18 years ago now or something like that um and it's like my little lectures in that subject i think has had more effect than than the book and it's like you know, I've, I've never, uh, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's more, it's, it's more what you, uh, I mean, I, I, I write things. I'm not, I'm, you know, definitely some of my content is, is, is written first and not just like my, you know, my, I take, I take some lecture, uh, I take some lectures or some shows and stuff and take notes and say, okay, well, I'll, pers I'll present my notes here and, do a little something else with it. I've, I've, I believe you saw one of those recently. Um, and because I definitely digest things. So I, I do sometimes like to uh, take notes as I go along. And um, so I have, I have all sorts of notebooks with, all, uh, with that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. I just have to go and get my charger here to my cell phone. But I've, you know, uh, we've, we've spent the time that's, uh, Who am I to write anything about anything? First, uh, I have to walk the path for 10, 20 years, and then I am in position to write something. Uh, you know, like someone like uh, who has uh, gone through the stages of the path and now is, yeah, has basically succeeded. Then 
uh, one is in position to write about it. And it, it is then it's actually fun to write about it because um, then you're not speculating, but you're talking about what you have experienced yourself and in the light of mature reflections as you are able to look back on it. Not as you have, uh, not as you are reflecting on it when you just have experienced it, because things have to be given time in order to be understood and integrated and so forth. Oh, so no, I think no. one of the things I find is is like, oh, I I, I, I interrupt you. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, no problem. Uh, what, one of the things that I that I found is it's like you you pick up this stuff and it's like uh, years ago or days ago or whatever and you read something that's like oh yeah i didn't know uh, my account i i forgot uh, i forgot about that part and uh like my, my season my seasonals kind of come off like writing a grimoire for me that's that's really that's really kind of kind of what goes on technically i mean a, not just some random occult book where you don't know whether the person's gone through the rituals or they really plan to or not um which uh, i mean People can write about that sort of stuff. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that. Because um, certainly, if you don't have the resources to do something, it doesn't mean you can't have a, put forward your thought on it necessarily. Um, but when you go back afterwards, like my Yule my Yule ceremony, there was stuff about that experience that it wasn't it, after I had that experience and after I shared that experience, I could go. I haven't figured out the riddle, but I can go back. I found all sorts of connections that was only necessary. Uh, I, I mean, only after, and there was there was time that went by. It wasn't just the video I make afterwards where I try to tell and tell what's what happened and continue the ritual and close it. Um, there was stuff about, you know, Uza and stuff like that, that, uh, you know, Shemyaz and all that, that, I was never able to find. I couldn't find it in my books. I couldn't do an internet search. And all of a sudden, as soon as I go back, I I ask a few people. I, uh, you know, you know, days have gone by. Then I can find it. And for some reason, I couldn't find any of these references beforehand. So I had to have a certain experience where I got a riddle to find some of the information regarding the riddle. I, I don't know uh, know how that came out uh, came off, but um, so I'm going to uh, I, I guess I guess it's I guess it's time to end that to, to end this. I'll probably I'll probably. Uh, suffix is a different video um talking about the verses that I, that i've mentioned but uh that are that are listed but um i have to say that comment when i see the picture on the screen here that first i have i have had different names on my youtube channel but then i was led to choose dark blue because of intuition and and synchronicity and so but um then when i when you interviewed me the first time or some of the first times you said channel dark blue and that makes sense because i have a youtube channel which is called dark blue but then when you said that i i came to think of yeah actually i call my channel channel dark blue and that makes sense because it is like a channel it is not it is not me the person only but it is like a channel of of energy or something some kind of energy essence so that's uh, that's uh, part of how the name came about so yeah even the name was channeled to me by this uh, coincidence of you uh, saying channel dark blue and they and then that i picked up on it and in the lizvuvama his name is mo Mavwe, Mavo, Lavum, Vumz, Wa, Rahaz, Fu. And if there's any final thoughts you'd like to close with? Um... No, nothing in particular. Only that, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, 
looking forward to interview you sometime for my channel. So I, I still have that uh, in my memory because you, you said that, uh, yeah, and if you still want to, I, I happily interview you sometime in the future, even though I cannot say exactly when, because I, I seem to have a lot of yeah. things happening right now in my, in my own um, life here. Okay.